You're listening to the Culips English podcast. To download the study guide for this episode, which includes the transcript, detailed vocabulary explanations, real-world examples, and a quiz, visit our website culips.com. C U L I P S dot com. Hello, everybody. My name is Andrew. And I'm Jeremy, and you're listening to Culips. Today we're going to do a catch word episode, which is the series where we teach all of our listeners how to use really important or interesting vocabulary and idioms, phrasal verbs, these sorts of things, and. Today we are going to explain a very tricky little word. Yeah. Several of our listeners requested this topic, so I thought we should talk about it. And we're going to talk about how to use the word though, though, t h o u g h, though, mm, though, but only at the end of a sentence. Okay, how to use though at the end. Of a sentence, and this is something that native speakers do all the time. Yep, it's very natural, and so I think it's important for our listeners to know how to be able to use this in their own English, and also to be able to understand what it means when they hear other native speakers do this. Yeah, very important. So, just before we get into it, I want to remind. Everybody, that there is a study guide for this episode. It's available for download on our website, culips.com. There's a lot of awesome stuff in there. You can find all the details and actually download some free samples of other study guides if you want as well. So I would encourage you to visit culips.com, download the study guide. It will make going through this lesson today much easier. Three ways that we can use though at the end of a sentence. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so usage number one: when we use though at the end of a sentence, what does it mean, Jeremy? When you see the though at the end of a sentence, what what's happening? It means what the person said is somehow contrary to what the other person said or thinks. So there, it's sort of like "but," but very soft in a way, less strong, not emphasized. Yeah, I, I agree. I think when we attach "though" to the end of our sentence, to the end of our thought,、mm -hmm. we're doing two things at once. First of all, we're communicating that we are sharing a fact or sharing our opinion, but we're also Softening our speech. Okay, so let's give an example of a sentence, and then maybe we can analyze it together. Okay, Jeremy, let's say that we both went to a Mexican restaurant last night. Okay,、mm -hmm. and and actually, Jeremy, you didn't like the nachos. Okay, you had some nachos, and you said、mm, those nachos were so so. Yeah, and then I respond by saying, "But the service was great, though."、Mm. But the service was great, though. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm doing here is, first, I'm sharing my opinion. Right. My opinion is the service is great. Yeah. And second of all, I'm kind of weakening the criticism that you made. Right. I'm softening the criticism you made. Oh, the nachos were terrible. Yeah, but the service was great, though. Right. I'm kind of. Counter arguing、mm -hmm. your your statement and and weakening the impact of that statement. Yeah, like you said, I think it's easy to understand though at the end of the sentence here as meaning but. Yeah, right. The nachos were terrible, but the service was great.、Mm -hmm. Is has the same meaning as the nachos were terrible, 
oh, the service was great, though. Right? It's、mm-hmm. the same thing. Though also makes it seem like you're adding on something, like it's an afterthought. It's a, a subtle addition, sort of. Like in your example, you said, oh, but the service was great, though. So you were tagging on your. Your subtle or slight difference in opinion. Yeah, it's a marker that's saying my opinion is different from yours, but I don't want to start an argument,、mm-hmm. right? <laughs> it's just a soft way to share your opinion. In your example, you said, but also. You said, but the service was great, though. If you said, but the service was great, then my feeling is, Do you want to fight? <laughs> are, are you arguing? Right, with me? yeah. But when you say though, it's softer. So I don't feel offended or you know, attacked in any way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strategic word, it,、mm. it carries meaning, but also it can be used strategically so that you don't offend your listener. I often explain it. To my students as a soft butt. Oh, a soft butt. Okay. B U T, one T, everyone. <laughs> But if it helps you remember, <laughs> though, it's like a soft butt. A soft butt. Well, yeah, that's a hard one to forget. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. I like it. <laughs> well, Jeremy, let's listen to a couple more examples with though. In the sentence final position,、right. carrying this meaning as、uh, a softener and as、uh, a way to share an opinion or a fact. All right. Did you see Monica's dress last night? What a disaster! I know. What was she thinking? Her hair looked great, though. Okay, Jeremy, so what was going on in this example? Two friends are talking about a woman's dress, Monica's dress, and they both agree that her dress looked terrible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, when the word though is used at the end of a sentence, it is used to attach some extra contrary information. Contrary meaning positive. The initial reaction was negative, saying, What a disaster. But when the word though was used, it added on information that was positive. Right. It was a way that they could soften their speech so they don't sound overly critical, right? Maybe they、yeah. felt bad about criticizing Monica's dress like that. Oh, what a disaster. Her dress. How terrible. Correct. And then, oh, You know, on the other hand, her hair did look great, right? Her hair did look great, though. Yeah. So it's this contrary information. It's also a way to sort of dig themselves out of a hole so that they don't sound too critical. And to be honest, if you take the word though out of this example, it doesn't really make sense. It's very confusing.、Mm-hmm. It seems like they didn't like her dress. And then someone says her hair looked great, it feels incomplete. It feels very strange to me without the word though. I agree with you. We need though there, or else this whole example falls apart. Yeah, true. So, should we listen to another example? Yeah, let's do one more. I can't believe the Yankees lost. What's their excuse? They really blew it in the ninth, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, but still, it was a good game, though. Totally. Very entertaining. All right, so let's think about this example here. The two friends are sad and upset that their beloved baseball team, the New York Yankees, lost the game. They're upset because the Yankees were winning and then they blew it. They fell apart and lost the game in the ninth inning, in the very last inning of the game. However, they realize that the game was entertaining. They say, well, still, 
It was a good game, though. It was a good game, though. Hmm. So although they're upset that their team lost, they are happy that the game was entertaining, right? So again, yes. here we see that contrast. The first part of the conversation, they're complaining, they're sad, and then when the word though is tagged on, it changes the mood. It's a more optimistic, positive mood. So we have this contrast. Positive to negative or negative to positive. Right? Exactly. So it's, it's softening the negative attitude that, was present in the first half of the conversation and changing the mood to a more positive mood. Yes. So in this example, uh, maybe the game was still close. The Yankees were winning. They made a lot of mistakes in the ninth inning and they blew it, meaning they lost the game, but maybe only by one run or something like that. So that's why... We would say it was still a good game, though. All right, Jeremy. We should keep things going forward. So let's move on to using yeah. though at the end of the sentence with a slightly different meaning. Okay. And sometimes when we use though at the end of a sentence, it carries the meaning of however. However. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can replace these two words and the sentence carries the same exact meaning however and though interchange they're interchangeable in many situations mm -hmm. so there's not actually too much more to explain than that it's just in the in the second sense of using though uh, in at the end of a sentence it means however okay why don't we listen to some examples using though when it can be interchanged with however and carry the same meaning. All right, let's have a listen. Hey man, what time does the movie start? I think it starts at 10, but I'm not sure though. All right, I'll check online. All right, a short but sweet example here. Jeremy, what's going mm -hmm. on in the example we just listened to? Well, with the previous meaning, it was changing something from positive to negative. In this example, it's changing something from sounding certain to a little uncertain. So it's still switching. It's still subtly changing something, mm -hmm. but in a different way. Right. So we heard the friend say, I think it starts at 10, but I'm not sure though. Mm -hmm. What happens if he had simply said, I think it starts at 10, but I'm not sure? Hmm. If he took away the though, I think it starts at 10, but I'm not sure. That sounds essentially the same to me, mm -hmm. but again, a little less soft. Yeah, yeah. A little harsh, maybe is a, a better word. Again, I think the meaning is the same. I think it starts at 10, but I'm not sure. And I think it starts at 10, but I'm not sure. Though, meaning is the same here for me. Although I agree with you. When you put though on there, you're softening your statement. You know, I think a way to understand this would be to imagine who we're talking to. Mm -hmm. So if you and I are very close friends, we've known each other for a long time, mm -hmm. We might just say, but I'm not sure. Right. But if you are an employee at the movie theater, but your job is to sweep the floors, mm -hmm. so you don't know for sure it, when the movie starts, you might say, though, to maintain some level of professionalism, politeness, because I am a customer and you are an employee of the movie theater. Mm. So it could you could say it's a little more polite because it's softer. Right. Yes. It it definitely is more polite because it's softer. And mm -hmm. I would recommend to all of our listeners to just remember this phrase as a chunk. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure though. Yes. Because 
English native speakers use this all the time. When we yep. don't know something, it's just a, a polite way to say, I don't know. Okay. I don't know is kind of strong. I'm not sure though. It is very polite, very soft, very natural. So I would recommend that everybody memorize that chunk. I'm not sure though. Just remember that it's adding on something as well. Yes, indeed. Okay, let's listen to one more example using though to mean however at the end of a sentence. Okay. Do you have time to grab lunch tomorrow? Tomorrow? I'm really busy tomorrow. I'll probably have around 20 minutes in the afternoon if you'd like to grab a quick coffee, though. Sure, that works. Sounds good. So in this example as well, the speaker is adding some information. It's an alternative to having lunch, right? So though indicates that this is an alternative option to having lunch. So again, like in all of the examples we've seen so far, there's some contrast, right? There's a contrast between having lunch and having coffee. I can't have lunch. I'm too busy, but I can have coffee. Okay. This would be a kind of beginner level sentence, I think, right? I can't have lunch, but I can have coffee. And a more advanced, a more polished, more nuanced way to express the exact same idea would be to say, I can't have lunch. I do have time for coffee, though, to use the though this way. And so we have this, this contrast, again, here communicated with the word though. All right, Jeremy, we have one more way that we can use though at the end of a sentence. And this is with the set expression, another chunk that everybody should add to their vocabulary. It's the simple phrase, thanks though, thanks though. Yeah, that's a good one to know. Yes. And so what does it mean? Thanks, though. Well, the though here indicates that there is some, some flipping, some, something contrary, but soft, softly contrary, you could say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I was walking down the street and I overheard someone say, thanks, though, I would immediately know that that person was rejecting something and trying to be nice about it. Exactly, exactly. We can say thanks though, whenever somebody wants to offer you something, but you can't accept it, or you can't do something, but you don't want to appear too rude. You know, you're rejecting somebody's offer. Yeah. But you don't want to hurt their feelings. You say, oh, thanks though. Thanks though. Another common way that we express this idea is with the phrase, thanks anyway. Oh, thanks anyway. Same thing, right? Yeah, exactly the same meaning in this sense. But though and anyway are not always interchangeable. Yes, don't fall into that trap. It's really only in these two thanks though, thanks anyway expressions that they mean the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. All right, let's listen to a couple of examples using thanks, though. Hey, dude, let's grab a beer after work. I'd love to, but I got other plans tonight. You sure? I'm buying. Uh, I'm sure. Thanks, though. Okay, Jeremy, two friends in this example are talking about having a pint after work and... One friend says that he can't, he can't join, he can't go, because he's got other plans. And so his friend really puts on the peer pressure, tries to twist his arm into coming out for a drink, and says, I'm buying. Come on. <laughs> it's on me, I'm buying. My treat. It's my treat. He says, no, I'm sure, I have other plans. Thanks, though. Thanks, though. All right, so here he's saying thank you for the offer of buying me a beer, but I can't do it. I have to reject it. And so thanks, though, here is a polite way to do that.
All right, let's listen to the final example for this episode. I'm getting rid of a bunch of my old books. You want to come by and take a look? You can take whatever you like. Hmm, tempting offer, but I've already got too many books sitting on my bookshelf that I haven't read. <laughs> Thanks, though. What's going on in this example, Jeremy? So, one friend is trying to get rid of some books and is offering to let his friend take any book he likes from his dusty library in his garage. Yep. And the other <laughs> yep. friend politely thanks him for the offer, but declines because he has too many unread books. Sounds like my real life situation. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, books are so easy yeah. to collect and so difficult to read sometimes. <laughs> well, after all, buying a book is much easier than reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> It's very true. <laughs> well, Jeremy, that about wraps things up for us today. I hope you guys now understand how to use though at the end of a sentence. If you have any questions or comments for us, please feel free to get in touch. Our email address is contact at qlips.com and we love to hear from you. So please send us a message. You don't have to send an email though. You can find us on Facebook and ask your question that way instead. Very good, Jeremy. Very good. We are on Facebook <laughs> at facebook.com slash Culips Podcast. And we're on Twitter as well. You can search for us there. And we have study guides, like I said earlier. So visit culips.com to get the study guide for this episode if you want to take your studies to that next level. All right, guys, we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Do you like listening to Culips? If so, please show your support by leaving Culips a five star rating and a review on iTunes or Stitcher. This helps new listeners find the show. So don't delay. Rate and review today.